Hello, welcome to Lunar Midnight Designs. For Pride Month, I will be turning this Claude Wolf into Shea Coulee from RuPaul's Drag Race. I just love this big pink flowy dress and I will do my best to recreate it for Claude. So let's get started. To start, I remove the hair by cutting it off and pulling it out of the head. And I clear, clean off the face up with 100% acetone. I will be using Deuce's hands because they have a more soft pose. And to make sure everything matches, I mix browns and matte varnish and paint over the body and head. I paint on thin layers just of paint layering it over time, making sure that there's no brush strokes in the end. Just thin watered down layers. I then seal it twice with more layers of matte varnish and then spray the body and head with Mr. Super Clear to prepare for blushing and the facing. For the body blushing, I will be going with pinks and shimmer. Similar to my Alien Fairy doll, the blush after being sprayed a second time completely disappears. And this also happens with the face up as well, so I just continue to add layer after layer. I have always been a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, mainly for the fashion. My favorite queens are Violet Chachki, Raja, Raven, Jujubee, Kimchi, Shea Coule, Trixie Mattel, and Katya, to name a few. I have made a few drag queens in the past before YouTube, like Violet Chachki and Trixie Mattel. To begin, I blush the eyes and cheeks, but you will soon see how much darker the color becomes after sealing it. I know in the show that the makeup that Shea Coulee has is pink, but I love the contrast of the blue in the other photos of Shea Coulee wearing this outfit, so I chose to take inspiration from that. I draw on the eyeshadow and lips. The eyeshadow is a mix of blues and whites, and the lips are a mix of pinks and purples. I do my best to match Shea Coulee's makeup. I draw the eyebrows and then repeat to the other side of the face. I continue to layer and add more details to the face. I draw on some lashes. I did add a beauty mark that is originally not in the makeup, it just felt right to add one due to the hair being similar to Marie Antoinette's style. The eyes will be a mix of browns. I add the catch lights and gloss the lips and eyes and add some false eyelashes. For the hair, I just brush out some yarn and straighten it with my straightener and then make some lifts.
The hairstyle is very unique. At first, I had no idea how to create the tall beehive look, but I figured it out in the end. After making the wefts, I glued them to the head. I glued them so I'm able to pull the wefts up and cover the beehive part. To give structure, I make a little beehive out of uh, felt and stuffing from the brushing the hair out. I then just glue that directly to the head and style the hair to cover it and curl some of the side pieces, the back pieces, and the little ponytail piece at top. And the hair is done. For the dress, I took pieces from different patterns I had, but I had to make the bodice piece one from scratch. So the fabric I will be using is a pink silk that frays like crazy. So once I draw the patterns, I seal the edges before cutting them with fray check. I cut out multiple layers of the skirt pattern in different lengths and different widths. So basically different wraparound sizes. I don't know how to explain that any better. I start with the bodice. I sew the sides, good sides in, and then hem the top and the bottom. And say hello to Oscar again. He's always interrupting me when I'm working. I then glue down the seams and iron bodice flat. I then add clasps to the back. From an old kid's dress, I cut a layer to make a petticoat skirt. It just came like that. I just cut the piece in like a skirt thing and hem the sides and the bottom and then attached it to the bodice piece. To make the fold style of the bodice, I use a skirt layer and glue it to the top of the bodice. I fold the layers as best as I can to make the fold pattern look. I then wrap around a ribbon to the waist to keep the folds in place and glue it down. I am using glue because I don't want to see any stitching. I then use more ribbon to glue on the straps. I cut one of my skirt pieces in half and then glue it to the sides to make the cape-like side pieces of the dress. My dress is not exactly like Shea Coulee's, but so far it is looking pretty good. Every skirt piece is hemmed with glue. And then the main dress is done. For the puffy sleeves, I gather the top of the sleeve all the way around and then fold it in half and sew just a little piece of it together. I hem the top part and then fold in the little flap on the inside and turn it inside out and there they are. Yes, they are a lot smaller from the original, but I do the best I can. For the gloves, I just make two tubes. Now I can make gloves that covered the hands, so to make it 
less plain on the hands. I did add an extra detail. It is not a part of the original look, I am aware, but I just felt like it would make the hands look elegant still, minus the glove part of it. And then off camera, I made some shoes, and, but because they're boy feet, I had to just make pink little slides. And with that, the doll is done. There were so many of my favorite drag queens to choose from and so many outfits that I just loved on the show and off the show. But when I first saw Shea Coulee coming out in this dress on All Stars, I just was in love instantly and I knew right then and there that I had to make a smaller version of it. I do plan on making some more in the future. And before YouTube, I did make two drag queens who were local in Canada, and then I made also one drag king. I hope you all enjoyed this doll custom, and happy pride! Thank you for joining me today, and creating this doll was a lot of fun. Follow me on Instagram to see more, and be more part of my process, and subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you for all the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon.